In our previous presentation, we understood how to find the time complexity of single loops, where in the update expression, we increment a variable by a constant. Now in this presentation, we will understand how to find the time complexity of single loops, where in the update expression, this time we decrement variable by a constant. So let's get started and let's see what are the topics of this lecture. The topic of this lecture is single loop decrement by a constant. We will discuss different single loops and we will discuss what happens when in the update expression we decrement a variable by a constant. How it affects the time complexity is what we will understand in this lecture. So let's get started with this and let's understand this properly. Let's take the first for loop for i equal to n, i greater than or equal to 1, i minus minus, printf Nesso Academy. In order to find the time complexity of this loop, we need to determine how many times this loop will run. Or, we need to determine how many times this printf function will run. Because the time complexity of a loop is same as the frequency count of the innermost instruction. The innermost instruction in this for loop is printf Nesso Academy. The frequency count tells the number of times an instruction executes. Therefore, we need to determine how many times this printf function will run. So, what do you think how many times this printf function will run? We can observe in this for loop, i is initialized to n and then we are checking this condition. Is i greater than or equal to 1? If it is the case, printf function will be evaluated and i is decremented by 1. Then i is again compared with 1, printf function is again evaluated and i is again decremented by 1. So, every time we decrement the value of i by 1, initially i is n, after decrement it becomes n minus 1, then it becomes n minus 2, then it becomes n minus 3, and so on, this will continue up to i equal to 1. When i becomes 1, again the printf function is evaluated. Then it is decremented by 1, it becomes 0. And we know 0 is not greater than or equal to 1. Therefore, the condition fails and hence the loop will terminate. So, clearly this loop will run from n to 1. And therefore, this printf function will run n times. And this means the frequency count of this instruction is n. And hence, the time complexity of this loop is big O of n. So, now I hope it is completely clear how to determine the time complexity of this loop. Now, we can observe in this loop that we have update expression as i minus minus. This means we have i equal to i minus 1. The constant here is 1. What if we have a different constant than 1? What if we have this for loop, where the update expression is i equal to i minus 2? This time we have a different constant here. What happens in this type of for loop? What is the time complexity of this type of for loop? Can we say the time complexity is still big O of n? And can we say this printf function will run exactly n times? One thing is sure that this printf function will not run exactly n times because this time we are not decrementing i by 1, we are decrementing i by 2. Initial value of i is n, after decrement it becomes n minus 2, then i becomes n minus 4, then n minus 6, and it will continue up to 1. Clearly, this loop will not run exactly n times. And therefore, this statement will not run exactly n times. How many times this statement will run then? We now need to determine how many times this statement will execute. 
To find this, we need to analyze each value of i at each iteration. So let's do this. We know the initial value of i is n. After decrement, it becomes n minus 2. Then, in the third iteration, i becomes n minus 2 times 2. Why? We again need to decrement i by 2. We know in the second iteration, we have i equal to n minus 2. After decrementing this n minus 2 by 2, we will get n minus 2 minus 2, which is equal to n minus 2 times 2. Similarly, in the fourth iteration, we will get n minus 3 times 2. Now we can observe a pattern here. The initial value of i is n, which is also equal to n minus 0 times 2. So in the first iteration, we have n minus 0 times 2. In the second iteration, we have n minus 1 times 2. In the third iteration, we have n minus 2 times 2. And in the fourth iteration, we have n minus 3 times 2. So let's say it will continue up to n minus k times 2. And k represents some value. We don't know that value. But let's assume that n minus k times 2 is equal to 1. So this is the last value of i for which this condition is true. After this, the value of i will be less than 1. And hence the condition will not satisfy. So I am assuming that n minus k times 2 is equal to 1. Now what do you think? How many times this loop will run? We can observe this. In the first iteration, we have 0 times 2. So in the first iteration, we have 0. In the second iteration, we have 1 here. It is n minus 1 times 2. In the third iteration, we have 2 here. This is n minus 2 times 2. In the fourth iteration, we have n minus 3 times 2. We have 3 here. So in the k plus 1th iteration, we have k here. So clearly, this loop will run k plus 1 times. Now let's find the value of k by using this equation. n minus k times 2 equal to 1. Now let's solve this equation. We can rewrite this equation as k times 2 equal to n minus 1. Because we can bring minus k times 2 to the right hand side, it becomes k times 2. And 1 to the left hand side, it becomes n minus 1. Now, in order to remove 2 from the left hand side, we can divide the left hand side and the right hand side by 2. So, we will get k equal to n minus 1 by 2. So, the value of k is n minus 1 by 2. And we know this loop will run k plus 1 times. Or we can also say that this innermost statement will run k plus 1 times. And as we know the value of k is n minus 1 by 2, therefore this statement runs n minus 1 by 2 plus 1 times. Therefore the frequency count of this instruction is n minus 1 by 2 plus 1. And again the time complexity is big O of n. It does not matter what constants we have here. Eventually, when writing the asymptotic value and that too with the asymptotic notation, we mention the dominating term. We can observe the dominating term here is n. Therefore, the time complexity is big O of n. So, this is the time complexity of this loop. If you remember in the last lecture, in place of i equal to i minus 2, we had i equal to i plus 2. That time also we get the same value, n minus 1 divided by 2 plus 1. So the minus sign here is not making any difference compared to what we have done previously. In place of minus sign, if we have plus sign, then also we will get the same value, n minus 1 by 2 plus 1. And the time complexity also remains same. We learned in the last lecture that the denominator of this fraction depends upon the constant of the update expression. Here we have 2. So the denominator will be 2. What if we have 10 here? 
In this third for loop, we have the update expression as i equal to i minus 10. So, what do you think? How many times this statement will run? This statement will run n minus 1 by 10 plus 1 times. And why do we have 10 in the denominator of this fraction? Because we have the constant 10 here. And we can also check in the previous lecture, when we had plus in place of minus, we were getting the same value n minus 1 by 10 plus 1. So, this statement will run these many times. And again, we can observe that the time complexity is big O of n. Also, it might be possible that in the examination, they will ask how many times the innermost instruction will execute. This means they will ask the exact value. Like what we are getting here, n minus 1 by 10 plus 1. They may ask this. In place of time complexity, they may ask the exact number of times. So, knowing this is also important. And no matter whatever constant we have here in the update expression, the time complexity remains same. So, this is one takeaway of this lecture. So, with this, we are done with this topic, single loop decrement by a constant. And this means we are done with this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.